the symptoms that we see associated with this are largely related to the brain and development and behavior. In children with this condition, they start out being a little bit slower in terms of reaching their milestones, walking and talking, but they're generally healthy. They're wonderful children in terms of their personality, but they do have challenges in terms of being able to learn things and it takes a lot more repetition for them to be able to gain those skills. We really all have to pitch in. Uh, if we don't, we're not going to make much progress. And that's for a couple different reasons. Um, because it's rare, there aren't that many individuals out there, and so we need to be able to make arguments to funders, um, to people who are in pharmaceutical companies, in places that are developing these strategies. It's a numbers game for them, and we have to show them that there's a market, if you will. There's a community of people that have this, and we have to be able to identify some unmet needs, that there really is need for this. That this is absolutely the case, but we need data to, and evidence to be able to show them this. So that's one issue. Um, the other is that for each individual, they are unique, truly are unique, and we do have something to learn from every single person. Because with this particular genetic condition, everyone is not a carbon copy of everyone else. They have a different genetic change um, within the region, within the gene, and so they have to be represented themselves, both in terms of the clinical data they provide, and also in many cases families are willing to give a blood sample from which we can make cell lines and be able to study that and we need to study as many different genetic versions of this as we can because we don't know that they're all exactly the same and if you're not represented, if your child, your family is not represented in those studies, you may be out of luck. We may not be able to both learn from you and come up with treatment strategies that are gonna be applicable. So we all have to pitch in. Uh, the goal is that if we make it easy enough to pitch in, it's not too big an ask to do it, um, but together we're much, much stronger than any one of us is alone. I think about multiple dimensions in which this can occur. And so I think about everything from gene editing, gene therapy, to really at the core sort of fundamental way make a change. Um, I think about medications that may be able to help with certain everything from sleep cycle to particular behavioral issues. Um, but I also even think about a dimension like technology. So how can we use things that are basically extenders uh, of what our own brains can do, but to be able to do it either faster or easier um, with things that may take away some of the barriers. So the good news is that genomic medicine has been just taking off and we really do have liftoff. Um, one of the things that's been most exciting is a condition called spinal muscular atrophy, which has really been, I think, a demonstration case to be able to show that certain strategies, therapeutic strategies, in particular gene therapy and gene replacement, they really are safe they're effective to be able to get into the brain and into the nervous system, and they're the demonstration um, that I think has built the confidence in the industry and the scientific community that now is the time to move forward. And so it's a really critical junction because a lot of people are, have now decided that this is a path forward, and they're trying to decide for which conditions now should we move forward. And so it's a great opportunity um, to sort of get things lined up, to de-risk them uh, for the people that are going to invest in this, um, get enough of the basic information so that we can be able to present a cogent argument for why now this is the time for our condition.